It took all the way until the month of June, but we finally got it. A slate that is riddled with some pretty bad weather. There are three or four spots where we could legitimately see postponements due to thunderstorms, both in the Midwest and on the East Coast. As always, that sucks. It's not fun to navigate around that, but the plus side is... But they should be able to play a decent number of those. And there are decent alternatives, both at pitcher and for stacking, we can still feel good about. So we're going to break down today's slate for MLB DFS, let you know which spots may be at risk, how to navigate that, and where to go should the weather wind up being a beast for tonight. Welcome on into the solo shop. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire, here to break down Friday's 13-game main slate, we hope 13 games, with locks up for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today. Let's start things off with listing off those games where the weather could get gross. First one is in New York for the Mets and the Blue Jays. They could be in trouble there, so uh, be wary of players there. Similar forecast in Boston for the Red Sox and Rays. I think both those games pretty seriously at risk of a postponement. In the Midwest, there's a chance of thunderstorms in Minneapolis for the Twins and Guardians and in Kansas City for the Royals and Rockies. I think all these games are pretty similar in terms of their risk levels as far as whether or not they're able to play. So again, the games that could be dicey, are in New York for the Mets and Blue Jays, Boston for the Red Sox and Rays, Minneapolis for the Twins and Guardians, and Kansas City for the Royals and the Rockies. Make sure you're checking back on timelines for those games later on. Uh, Check the weather reports before you finalize your roster, before you head off for the day, just to make sure those games are good to go. There are just three games with temperatures under 70 degrees for today. Those games are in San Diego for the Padres and Cubs. Los Angeles for the Dodgers and Yankees, and San Francisco for the Giants and Orioles. So while we're downgrading other games due to potential risk of postponement, these ones for batters are downgraded due to the weather. So again, San Diego uh, for Padres and Cubs, Los Angeles for Dodgers and Yankees, and San Francisco for the Giants and the Orioles. We're going to dive into... How to navigate that, uh, which guys are in fine weather or in domes, hopefully, to allow themselves to get around that and much more in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. We, of course, are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts. Wherever you get your podcasts, you can find us there. While you're there, if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating as well. And, of course, all these shows, the solo shots, do go up over on the FanDuel YouTube page. If you like what you hear there, subscribe to the FanDuel YouTube page for all the other great content. And also, leave us a thumbs up. It is almost time to crown an NBA champion, and FanDuel wants you to be a part of the excitement. Because right now, new customers can get... no a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's $2,500 back in bonus bets. If your first bet doesn't win, there's no better place to bet all the finals action than America's number one sports book. FanDuel official sports betting partner of the NBA must be 21 plus and present in select States. First online, real money wager only $10 deposit required refund issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 533-42. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-789. 7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in indiana 1-800-9 with it in wyoming and kansas 1-800-522-4700 or in kansas ksgamblinghelp.com louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP in massachusetts gambling helpline ma.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in maryland mdgamblinghelp.org in new york 1-877-8-HOPE and wire text open why and in west virginia go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net pitching preview for this friday main slate there are a lot of guys with salaries above nine thousand dollars so here is the list from Valdez is at the top his salary 11-2 followed by logan webb at 11-1 zach wheeler 10-9 shohei otani 10-8 clayton kershaw 10-3 luis castillo 10-2 merrill kelly 10-1 bailey ober 10 flat with justin verlander at 9900 chris bassett 96 charlie morton 95 michael walker 93 Tyler Glass on 92, John Gray 9,000, with Luis Severino, Aaron Savalli, 
Josiah Gray, Dean Kramer, and Jack Flaherty as the others at $8,000 or higher. So again, weather risk, but we got a lot of guys to choose from. So that does help things for sure. And luckily, a handful of the best pitchers, and I think the best pitchers, the best three, are all in situations where the weather will not impact them. The first one is because he's in a dome. We got a handful of good pitchers on this slate. Some of them are in solid matchups. But in terms of raw ceiling, I feel like Shohei Otani has to be the guy for tonight. He just has the best strikeout potential of the bunch. Otani is facing the Astros, and this offense is getting healthier, which means their power numbers are finally creeping up. But they're also still not the low strikeout offense they were the past couple of years, where they're a bit below average or a bit better than average in that regard, but not a low strikeout offense. And that, to me, is enough to give us a green light on Otani. We're up to 11 starts on Otani so far this year. He is still letting out just a 29% hard hit rate. He didn't let up a single hard hit ball in 13 balls in play last time out. It was against the Marlins, so it deserves an asterisk, but they're still a big league team. So it's absurd what he's doing right now. The skill interactive ERA for Otani is 3.30, his expected ERA 2.87, and it comes with a 35% strikeout rate and a 14.9% swinging strike rate. That strikeout rate for Otani is actually higher on the road than it is at home, which is odd, uh, but you'll take it as he goes to Houston, tends to be a pretty high strikeout location as well. Even against tough teams, we've seen Otani rack up strikeouts. He faced Houston once this year. Uh, was back on May 9th, and so I think that's enough time where it's not a huge concern, enough separation where it's not a familiarity issue. I have Otani projected for 8.5 strikeouts here. Nobody else is within one strikeout of him, so even though other guys have better matchups, I think Otani has the best ceiling, and that's how I play things. So Otani, to me, the top pitcher for today. Zach Wheeler has a better matchup from a floor perspective, which may make him the play for cash games. But I don't think his upside is quite as high for tournaments. So I still like Wheeler enough to rank him second, but that's why I have Otani first. Wheeler's facing the Nationals, which is both a good and a bad thing because the good is they're bad. They have an 87 WRC plus against righties, a 127 ISO, and they never draw walks, which is awesome for floor. The bad is that they also don't strike out. Their strikeout rate against righties is 19%. That is the lowest number on the slate, and that definitely does impact Wheeler's upside. But he has pitched really well this year. He has a 3.42 skill interactive ERA with a 28% strikeout rate and a 13.4% swinging strike rate. Wheeler has faced much tougher teams and done well against them. He had 12 strikeouts against the Braves on the road last time out. And the task this time is much easier. So I don't blame you if you want to go with Wheeler over Otani because the floor is better here for sure. But my personal process is to gun for ceiling and Otani's is higher. I have Wheeler projected at 6.5 strikeouts because the matchup is so meh in that regard. And that is enough for me to put him second on this list, but it's not enough to put him above Otani. So if you want the floor, go Wheeler. If you want the juice, the ceiling, the upside, I would go Otani. My personal preference, my personal process is to go uh, for the highest upside guy I can get and that it winds up being Otani. So to me, the ranking for tourneys is Otani one, then Wheeler two. Now, because we have guys like Wheeler, Otani, Valdez, et cetera, et cetera, on this slate, I don't want to sacrifice points at pitcher, which means if I'm spending down, I still need upside. I think John Gray is the lowest I can go while still getting that upside. So to me, he is the top value play of the night with a salary of $9,000 on FanDuel. Gray is facing the Mariners, and they're a good offense, but they're definitely one that will strike out. 25% strikeout rate against righties on the current active roster. We talked about this last week, but Gray has cut back pretty dramatically on his forcing fastball usage. It did go up a back, back up a smidge in his most recent start, but in that game, he was still very effective. Eight strikeouts there. That's his second time getting eight strikeouts in this four start span. He had a 16.3% swing and strike rate. If we open up the sample and look at all four starts with fewer four seamers, Gray's strikeout rate is 27%, and that is a big deviation from what he was doing before. Now, Gray did start the stretch against the Mariners, which means they saw him in his current state. That was back on May 8th. It's pretty recent, but I think it's enough cushion where familiarity is not a massive, massive red flag. So it's still a small sample on Gray doing this, but we've seen it now for four starts. We've seen the underlying numbers like swing and strike rate have correlated with this. He's been getting whiffs against pretty good teams. So I like what he's been doing. The advanced numbers are great. 
that's enough for me to make John Gray the top value for today at 9,000 and a guy I am willing to use because I think he can get me on a great day, 10 strikeouts, and that's enough on this slate. So John Gray at 9,000, lowest I'm willing to go on FanDuel for tonight. So top three pitching options, all things considered, Shohei Otani, Zach Wheeler, and then John Gray. The stacking options also do begin with some teams that are not playing in bad weather. That started things off with the Cardinals facing Ronzi Contreras, who made a relief appearance last week, but he's now back in the rotation. I kind of understand why his spot in the rotation is a bit shaky. The peripherals for Contreras are a bit underwhelming across his nine starts. So excluding that one relief outing, he has a 5.47 skill interactive ERA with a 16% strikeout rate and an 11% walk rate. The ERA for Contreras as a starter is still decent at 4.50, but the bad at ball data, not great either. He's let up a 42% hard hit rate with a 43% fly ball rate. And he's facing a pretty tough Cardinals offense. 108 WRC plus against righties minimal strikeouts and added bonus for tonight is that it is very, very warm in Pittsburgh, 90 degrees. That is the second warmest game on the slate behind just the one in Arizona where the roof should be open for tonight. So not a ton of great stacks that I love on this slate, especially once you consider weather, but of the bunch, I think this is the best one. So the Cardinals to me are the top stack on this Friday main slate. And we talked about Contreras talked about the bad of ball issues. I think an underrated part here in stacking the Cardinals is how almost all their guys run only three players on their active roster have zero stolen bases against right handed pitching so far this year. Seven guys have multiple stolen bases. So yeah, the power is there for most of these guys, but the speed is too. So let's say hypothetically Contreras get, you know, isn't letting up long balls tonight. I think they can still get there. They can still pay off for DFS even when that doesn't happen. And I am a huge fan of that personally. Also, it does sound like Jordan Walker should be back for tonight. Wasn't phenomenal when he was up the first time, still trying to increase that uh, that fly ball rate, but he's minimum salary, probably going to bat eighth or so. I think that's fine. I think that whether as a one-off or within stacks, he's pretty fun. If you want to get to Otani while using the high upside guys in the Cardinals lineup, I would say probably want to give Walker long consideration, something I personally am very willing to do. For the second stack, let's talk here about the White Sox. Uh, they're facing Reese Olsen making his debut for the Tigers. And if this matchup had happened a few weeks ago, I probably would have ignored it because the White Sox were missing a lot of key players. But they're getting healthier now, and I think we can stack them in this matchup. Olsen's coming up from AAA, where he did get some strikeouts down there. Also did a good job of getting ground balls, but it didn't really translate to results. Down there, Olsen had a 6.38 ERA. His ex-ship was 4.68. He was walking too many guys, and that was kind of the key driver in the, the rougher numbers. So you could look at that and say, um, you know, do we trust it? But he did that in the lower minors as well. Now he moves up to talk to, to face the majors. The White Sox, still not great. 91 WRC plus against righties, but they've got bodies back. They're starting to trend up. I'm not convinced Olsen will succeed right away in the majors, which means I think we have the leeway to stack the White Sox against him on this slate. Eloy Jimenez, just getting back from his appendix issue, your core impacts pretty much everything. So always a concern having legitimate surgery down there. And he's also dealing with a leg injury, apparently. Since coming back from the appendix issue, though, uh, Jimenez does have two doubles and a home run and 18 plate appearances. He did see the ball pretty well in his plate appearance in his uh, rehab stint because drew a lot of walks down there. So I don't think he's like a massive priority relative to where he typically would be, but um, he's in play at least. I think I've seen enough to say he's in play. I don't think he's going to be the top guy in the stack, but he's okay. And a guy I feel okay proceeding forward with based on what we've seen so far since he returned. Finally, for our third stack, this is where the weather starts to play in because there is some potential weather in this game. That's the Royals and Rockies. Uh, the Royals facing Chase Anderson tonight. And I think we want to give them consideration if the weather gives us the green light to do so. Anderson has been awesome in his three starts. He has a 1.72 ERA and all three of those were at Coors Field. And he's not there for tonight. So that's a positive. But I also want to follow the transactions and the actions teams have taken because Anderson opted out of his contract at the Reds, and then the Rays claimed him and then released him. The Reds didn't see enough there to promote him. The Rays didn't see enough to keep him. And I do think that that stuff does kind of matter at some point. 
plus the peripherals for Anderson are still not great. Across those three starts, his skill interactive ERA is 5.38. He has a 13% strikeout rate. He has done a good job of suppressing hard contact, but it's a question of whether he can sustain that over a larger sample. The Royals offense is not phenomenal, but they do at least have some pop. They have a 41% fly ball rate against righties, which ranks third on the slate. So I don't want to stack them super, super often, but I think this is a spot where we can do so and feel okay uh, while doing it. We did see Bobby Wicket bump down the order last week, and that can always be a concern because it means maybe he's lacking confidence. Maybe the team is down on him, but clearly didn't bother him. He responded well with a pair of dingers a few days later. I don't think that the dingers for Wit were a huge surprise. His expected Woba is 334, which is almost 40 points higher than his actual Woba. His barrel rate is 11.5%. That is higher than what it was last year. His hard hit rate is also up to 43%, and he steals all the time. So the Royals need to make a change, apparently. They bumped him down the order, but I don't think we should bump him down at all. Uh, I think he's still the key cog in this offense and stacking the Royals, given he is a guy with two sources of upside. The power should come in probably pretty short order. So I think Witt, despite the demotion, now batting in the cleanup spot, definitely makes a lot of sense there. Um, not too concerned personally about his outlook going forward. Things to watch for tonight. There are a couple other spots that I like for stacking, but they're also dependent on weather. The first one is a raise facing Garrett Whitlock, Whitlock, who is stretching back out into being starter this year. He was not lights out before he missed some time. And now he has to face the Rays. And Whitlock does do some things pretty well, but it's the Rays. So if the weather allows, I am very okay stacking them here because Whitlock, not a guy we need to avoid in the Rays. Great offense on a slate that's pretty thin on stacking options. So if we if the weather's okay in Boston, I'd be okay stacking the Rays. I'd also be okay at the Rockies as one-offs against Jordan Lyles. He's had massive issues this year with a lot of fly balls let up. As discussed yesterday, the Rockies are not a fun team to stack because they don't have a lot of guys with juice. But if you need a final batter and one of these guys fits, I think that's fine. I just wouldn't actively seek them out uh, here, even if the weather does wind up being okay. Finally, if not for the cool temperatures, I'd be on the Giants for stacking tonight. And if other spots get a lot of rain, like let's say worst case scenario, all four of the weather spots wind up being bad, maybe we have to get to them anyway. Giants are facing Dean Kramer, who is letting up a lot of hard contact since he started to reduce his sinker usage. It's a good offense against righties and the Giants. So if the weather cuts down on this slate, the Giants would be a team I'd consider, despite the fact the weather is pretty bad for stacking for tonight. Let's finish up here with the dinger calls for this Friday. The boring one. Got to go to that Cardinals game and go with Nolan Gorman. I think he's just the, the best pure raw power hitter on this offense right now. Um, hair above Goldschmidt and Arenado. Uh, more than a hair above Arenado, based on the way things have gone this year, but above Goldschmidt. So Nolan Gorman hits the axe. Our salary is pretty high at $3,700, but um, I'm still on board. So Nolan Gorman in a bit of a slump right now, but a guy I'm willing to buy into uh, for a dinger call here. The fun one, MJ Melendez. I feel like I've made a dinger call like 16,000 times or so, give or take this year, but it's for good reasons because he's making a lot of hard contact, barreling the ball, but it hasn't led to results. Melendez is a value play, $2,800. I think that uh, the match for the Anderson lets up enough fly balls. If we get the all clear on the weather there, I think Melendez is a good option. If not, I'll go Jordan Walker. We'll go back to the Cardinals for our second one too, just because I'm broadly in favor of him. Hope he comes back up and uh, does well. Not a big power, like a home run guy because of the launch angle, but still a guy who is who I enjoy. So Melendez, the primary fun one. Walker, the backup, uh, should things get gross in Kansas City. That is all that we have here for today on the solo show. We'll be back with you again on Monday to break down all of next week's MLB DFS slates. To get those slates, those podcasts as they are posted, make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. And if you like what you hear, you must say five star rating as well. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J I M S A N N E S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll talk to you once again on Monday. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.